All right, and welcome back to the demonstration of the Dofer A189-1 voltage controlled bit modifier. Uh, my name is Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at a more experimental use for our friend, the Dofer A189-1 voltage controlled bit modifier. Um, up until now, if you watch any of the other segments, uh, you saw this module uh, being used as a audio processor where we fed an audio track into the signal in and then fed that same signal once modified in this module out to our recorder and heard exactly what this module can do. Uh, and we used uh, the bit crush dial uh, as well as the sample rate dial to modify the sound. Uh, well, this time around, we're going to be using the bit crush dial to adjust the signal that we feed in. Uh, but as I said a little bit earlier, we're going to be using this to modify control voltages. Um, and it is sort of an experimental type use for this module, but it's actually a very fun, fun thing to do. Um, I tried it myself after reading the technique on a forum. Um, I was, you know, very intrigued by this and I thought, well, huh, I never really thought of that. It wasn't listed in the manual or anything. So decided I'd try it out. Um, and I found some really interesting effects with it. Um, I also uh, emailed tech support at Dofer just to make sure, you know, because I, I wish I was more familiar with this particular electrical part, but uh, I wasn't too, too familiar or comfortable with, you know, feeding these types of signals in here since it wasn't listed in the manual. But I did indeed find out that uh, the technique is actually fine for using to process CVs. So that's what we're going to be demonstrating today. Um, but where are these CVs going to be coming from? Well, they're going to be coming from one of these two modules right over here, uh, either the Dofer A145 LFO or the Dofer A147 voltage controlled LFO. Uh, and as we move along, we'll uh, see which one we want to insert into our signal chain here. Uh, so without further ado, we're just going to jump right in. Um, and we're actually going to start by hearing our dry signal, uh, what we're going to be working with. So this is our A110 over here, oscillator. It's going to be our sound source. And I'm going to be using the saw wave. So let's hear what our saw wave sounds like uh, unmodified. So here we go. So there is our uh, saw wave unmodified. Um, there it is. Fairly nice. I like it. Um, so that's our dry signal. And now I'm going to feed it a uh, waveform uh, in the low frequency. So that's what this switch over here is, low frequency. And I'm going to feed it a uh, triangle wave. So that's my favorite kind of wave. And I'm going to patch it right into the CV of the Dofer 110 and I'm only doing this so that we can hear what the dry CV signal going into here, unmodified, is going to sound like. So here we go, right into CV1. So that's our normal modulation going in. Control voltage signal going from the A145 over to the pitch of the A110, standard VCO. And then, of course, I could, you know, bring the frequency up. And it's modifying the pitch a little bit faster. Or I can bring it down. Okay, so now that we have an idea of what that sounds like, let's see what our little friend, the A189-1, can do. So I'm going to make sure I'm in mode 1, just so we have a good starting point. And I'm going to patch into my signal in. There we go. And then I'm going to patch into my signal out right here. And I'm going to actually bring the big crush all the way down to zero. So we should hear something pretty close to what we heard a moment ago. Here we go. Okay. So that's our pretty close to dry modulation signal that we heard when we piped straight from the triangle wave to control voltage 1. And so let's slowly bring in our bit crush and hear what starts happening to our modulation. 
There we go, starts to happen right there. All right. So right there, we're already getting some fairly interesting results. Now at this point, I can bring up the frequency on my LFO if I want it to go a little bit faster. Go a little faster. Almost sounds like some sort of video game going on right there. Bring it down to about the one o'clock position. Okay, so that's at the one o'clock position. Going into my signal in. And then Bit Crush is about at 11 o'clock. So let's see what happens when I go up with the Bit Crush dial. And there it's only a sequence of three notes. And uh, just from kind of experimenting with this a little bit, I found that if I change the level a little bit, I actually get a slightly varied result. So I'm going to kind of adjust that a little bit. See there, it's kind of changing a little bit. And there, I kind of lost it, so now I'm going to want to go back up. And it's just a little bit of playing with these two dials right here until you get something you like. And I'm going to actually come back on the Big Crush. There we go. There we go. That's very similar to what we had a second ago, but it's a little bit different. Uh, but the idea is that um, what I found anyway experimenting with this module is by adjusting the level and the bit crush style, you can actually get some fairly interesting results. Um, I haven't seen, at least in my experiments, too much of an effect when using the sample rate dial. Um, and I'll sort of demonstrate that right now. Right now, 10 where the sample rate should be at the full rate if it was audio and I can bring it all the way back to the maximum and I pretty much don't hear anything. And this is actually fairly true throughout the rest of the modes, at least in my experiments as I said. But uh, by all means, if you, if you want to experiment with that dial, uh, go to it. Um, for the rest of this demo though, I'm just going to show you some of the stuff you can do with these because we do have about 16 other modes. Right now we've just kind of touched the surface of mode number one and that's only by using a triangle wave. So since we have our triangle wave, let's actually go into mode number two. I'm going to switch over to mode two. Okay, so now we do have a little bit of a change in our sound. And mode two, if you're interested, is actually the and mode. And so it sounds as though maybe my modulation is not really having the effect that I may really want. So at this point, I can go in and start maybe adjusting the level. And there I can see that it's changing the sound a little bit. There we go. I actually found a nice little spot right there in the middle. There we go. If I bring it down a little bit. Let's see if I go up a little bit. So there we go. Okay, so now that I got something I like, now I can go over and maybe adjust the frequency a little bit, bring it down a little bit lower. I can go up. Maybe adjust my level a little bit. Big crush. Almost like a laser gun type effect going on. Okay, 
Okay, so that's mode two, the hand mode. Yeah, it's just with a triangle wave. So now we're going to flip to mode three. And this is going to be the or mode. So here we go. I'm going to keep the same settings. We're just going to pop into mode three. So here we go. They're pretty different than what we had a second ago. Try bringing the frequency down a little bit. And I don't know if I'm really liking that effect. Let's see if I can bring the level down a little bit and get something slightly different. Pretty interesting little effect. Start bringing down my frequency a little. Maybe down a little bit lower. So if what you're after is special effects or kind of unpredictable type uh, glitchy kind of beepy sounds, then this is definitely going to do the trick. I'm going to maybe add a little bit of different adjustment to this. Very nice little effects. So, I like that. So, since we've gone a little bit through the triangle wave, I don't want to stay with one wave form all the way through all the modes. So let's try a sine wave and see if we get something a little bit different. So I'm going to unpatch the triangle wave. And I'm going to go into a sine wave. Here we go. There we go. I can bring my frequency up a little. Adjust my level. Here we go up a little bit. And a big crash. So some fairly interesting results going on here. Let's actually bring up the frequency a little bit. There in mode three, that's our or mode. So let's try switching over to mode four. There we go. Okay, pretty nice little sound. Let's turn the frequency down a little bit. Maybe bring the level down a little bit. Big crush down. Sounds pretty close to a regular modulation, but possibly just a little bit distorted. So maybe let's go back up with the big crush. is mode 4, that's the XOR mode. Okay, making some fairly good progress here. So let's try our uh, saw wave from our A145. Here we go, ready? Saw wave. And it's just sort of a more repeating type sound. Oh, what am I changing over here? Let's try frequency. Okay, that's nice. Let's try to big crush a little bit. And let's bring up the level. Okay. And then just for kicks, we're going to actually try and play with the sample rate and see if anything happens to our signal. And just as I suspected, it's not really changing our modulation that much. 
But we're still getting some pretty interesting sounds coming out here. And this is just, you know, one LFO going into a voltage-controlled bit modifier.